Hello everyone. In my last driver profile video about Slim Borgood, I briefly discussed how F1 and motorsport in general prides itself on being open to participation from people from all walks of life. One example of this is that men and women usually aren't segregated in motorsports like they are in other competitions like rugby, football or cricket. Even sports that don't give any advantage to people with physical strength, like darts or chess, they are separated into male and female categories. Up until recently, car racing was in a very select group of sports that didn't discriminate. The idea is, if you're fast enough, you can race. Let me tell you why I think F1 Academy is a failure. F1 Academy is an all-female racing series set up by the FIA which has backing from several F2 and F1 teams. 15 drivers take to a small selection of circuits and it's a support category of F1 but doesn't race on the same weekends like Formula 2 and Formula 3 do. The idea is that F1 Academy is supposed to act as a stepping stone for female drivers between getting out of karting championships and moving into single-seater car racing. This idea was the same as the now defunct W Series, which was another all-female series that ran from 2019 to 2022. So, since the inception of W Series, and more recently F1 Academy, how many drivers who have competed in these series later went on to compete in the next level on the feeder series ladder? Is it 5? Is it 10? No. Zero drivers have used either all-female series to move further along of the junior ladder. Several drivers have moved away from European single-seaters entirely, most notably three-time W Series champion Jamie Chadwick, who has moved into the Indy NXT series in the United States, a series which is basically the F2 of IndyCar. A lot of the gripes that people had when the W Series was around centred on Chadwick. She won all three editions of the championship in 2019, 21 and 22, and some fans criticised the lack of competition since she was always winning. In my opinion, they should have introduced a rule like they have in Formula 2 and Formula 3, that any champion can't race in the championship anymore. This rule is what drives progression in junior series racing and stops the best drivers from stalling in one series while ruining the tight competition for everyone else. They have somewhat fixed this in F1 Academy, but the 2023 champion, Marta Garcia, has moved into Freca for 2024, which is practically a step below Formula 3. We'll see how she does next season, but it seems that she hasn't followed the progression that F1 would have wanted her to, considering the ladder they set out at the start of 2023. Another thing that was wrong with the W Series, but less so F1 Academy, was that the W Series chassis were completely bespoke to that series. So there was no yardstick to compare the women's times to the men because the men simply had no comparison available to make. This has been changed this year with F1 Academy, as they use a generic F4 chassis that is the same in other F4 series around the world. Therefore, you could potentially compare the times on race weekends at the circuit that converged with F1 Academy and the relative national series. I say potentially because obviously track conditions and temperatures may alter times somewhat and make comparisons a bit more unrepresentative. Another problem I have with F1 Academy is the lack of exposure it gets. There was a bunch of hype surrounding it following the announcement of its arrival in 2023, but then the FIA announced the series would not be available on live television. Instead, they were going to compile highlights packages of races to be put on YouTube. This was such a lazy way of doing things, no one's going to watch just the highlights, and it's not a problem with money or logistics because several smaller and less well-known series do broadcast their races live. Even if it's not on regular television, they will stream their races on YouTube or another streaming platform. This was such an open goal that was missed in the creation of F1 Academy, although they did broadcast the season finale in Austin, in Texas, when all the hype and excitement around it had gone away. So, great idea FIA. Another problem I have with these female series is they contradict every single point they make. They say an all-female racing series will bring women in racing more exposure and chances to impress, yet they refuse to broadcast the races live, and they want to spread a message of acceptance and inclusion. So, with this message of acceptance and inclusion, you'd expect the race calendar to reflect this. What you wouldn't expect is for the series to announce they are racing next year in 2024 in a country that treats women like second-class citizens. Maybe it's a shock, then, that they have announced just that. One of the rounds in the 2024 F1 Academy series will be held at the Jeddah Corniche circuit in Saudi Arabia. That's the same Saudi Arabia that only granted women the legal right to drive a road car on normal streets in 2018. Seems a bit contradictory to the whole mission statement then, doesn't it? The last thing I want to lambast is the whole idea of a series, because it's a crock of shite really. The series was created because the FIA believe women in motorsports don't have enough exposure. Let's ignore the fact that the heads of strategy at two of the most successful teams in recent history are both women. Let's ignore that Claire Williams ran one of the most legendary teams in F1 history for several years and did the best job she could while the other teams outspent her team. But their point is that female drivers don't get enough exposure. That's because there's no support at grassroots level, not because they're not good enough. I've done race commentary at a national level karting circuit for six months now and guess how many girls or women I have seen in the driver's seat. One. Just one. 
The problem isn't that motorsport is sexist, because I think that 99% of a racing community has moved on from the chauvinism and sexist tropes of yesteryear. You would never hear a story nowadays about a female driver being turned away from an F1 race because the race director told her that the only helmet that a woman should wear is in the kitchen. That's an actual story that happened in the 1958 French Grand Prix to the pioneering female F1 driver Maria Teresa de Filippis. Women who did slip through the cracks of sexism in previous eras have proven they can kick ass. Michel Mouton was one of the best drivers in the Group B Rally era and is one of the best drivers never to win the WRC. When she won the Pikes Peak Rally in 1985, she told the other drivers when they complained about how fast she was that if they had the balls, they'd race her down the mountain again. Nikki Lauda called her a superwoman and Sterling Moss said she was one of the greatest. Danica Patrick was one of the best IndyCar drivers of the late 2000s before she switched over to NASCAR and drove like she had no arms or legs. Even if she's a massive cunt off track, who used the death of a terminally ill cancer patient to project her disliking for a driver she didn't like, she was one of the best and could have done more if she didn't switch to stock car racing for the money. David Coulthard once said that his sister was faster than him when they went kart racing together as well. Women don't need patronising gimmicks, they need support from a grassroots level upwards. The FIA Women in Motorsport Commission had Carmen Jorda as one of his representatives, which is the worst thing you could do. Jorda is one of the worst drivers in modern feeder series racing history and she has no place deciding what support women should get because she was the most token inclusion and diversity hire in the history of the sport. She was awful, at times being 20 seconds a lap off the pace of other GP3 drivers in certain weather conditions in the mid-2010s and should have been nowhere near a racing car. But she is the exception to the rule. Women do belong in motorsport, they do belong in the driver's seat, they just need support. The reason why there's hardly any women in the regular feeder series is because there's not many women in racing at all, which again stems back to a lack of grassroots support. Asking why there's no women in F1 is like asking why there's no drivers from the Vatican City in F1. It's because there's a much smaller pool of drivers to pick from. Girls are turned away from the sport for many reasons, whether it be sexism, a lack of money, or a lack of interest. But if the FIA genuinely want to make a difference, what they need to do is stop it with the patronising token diversity and inclusion series and put money into karting circuits and racing scores and fund programmes to get girls interested in motor racing and engineering. Women have proven that they can do well, so do it properly and pull your finger out of your arse, Ben Soleim. Do what's right. Anyways, with that rant over, I think that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed my more opinion-based video, and I'll see you all soon for another upload in the future, probably an Unsung Zeroes video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe to see more content from me in the future, and also follow my Instagram and subscribe to my Patreon, links are in the description. I've been Nedzo, and I'll see you all later. Bye!